That is it for today's tutorial. Look like there is still some time before the lesson ends. Do you all want to see some magic? Yes. yes. Just kidding, of course. This isn't magic, it is physics. Anyone who can think of the reason why the table tennis ball can bounce up way higher than usual can get a free pizza from me. Ha ha ha, me, 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 I know the answer, I know the answer. This is so easy, you know. It must be due to magnets. Huh? My physics teacher taught me something about magnetic repulsion. The smaller ball is a circle, so it behaves like a mini earth having your magnetic field around it. The bigger ball also is a circle, so it must also be the same. Therefore, everything must be related to how light charges repel, unlike charges they attract. Both balls must be light charges. Ha ha ha, that's why it repels. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. I'm, I'm always correct. Thank you for the pizza and buns. I don't think that's how it works. Instead, we can explain this using conservation of energy. As the basketball collides with the ground, kinetic energy of the basketball is lost negligibly as thermal and sound energy and largely converted to elastic potential energy as the basketball compresses. Some of this elastic potential energy stored in the basketball is then transferred to the table tennis ball as positive work is done by the basketball on the table tennis ball when they collide. Using conservation of energy, the total energy of the table tennis ball after collision is more than the total energy of the table tennis ball before collision, thus causing the table tennis ball to have a higher rebound velocity, reaching a greater height. All these energy conversion are illustrated as shown. I agree. However, we can extend the explanation to make it better by using conservation of momentum. In this case, there is an external gravitational force acting on the system throughout the experiment. However, during the ball's collision, it does not change the motion of the ball significantly. Thus, we can ignore it and assume momentum is conserved as shown in equation 1. Kinetic energy can also be assumed to be conserved as energy is lost negligibly. Thus, this collision can be said to be an elastic collision, which means that the relative speed of approach is equal to the relative speed of separation as shown in equation 3. Since the mass of the basketball, capital M, is about 200 times the mass of the table tennis ball, small letter m, hence, the following equations can be simplified to get V2 equals to 3U1, a factor of 3 increase in speed as shown. Thus, it reaches a greater height. This can also be expressed in the diagram shown. Haha, unfortunately, Ida's explanation was incorrect, but Hugh Anus and Tom Yam got it right. Do you also know that NASA uses similar concepts to accelerate spacecraft so as to use less fuel? This shows you can use these concepts, you can work at NASA and become a millionaire! Easy. Just kidding! How they accelerate it is by using a maneuver called the gravity assist which works exactly like what was shown in the video earlier, except they do not collide to transfer momentum. Instead, gravity acts at a distance in order to transmit the force. The key to understanding how gravity assist works is to consider the problem from two different perspectives, the planet frame and the sun frame. Consider the ideal arrangement where a spacecraft moves around the backside of a moving planet, as shown. In the planet frame, the spacecraft initially moves with the velocity of V plus U rightward, and as a final velocity of v plus u leftward, as the initial speed equals final speed. Converting this to the sun frame, we have the initial speed of v and the final speed of v plus 2u, where u is the velocity of the planet with respect to the sun. This is similar to the table tennis ball having a factor of 3 increase in speed. 